Welcome to Unit 3, Part 2, which is all about the periodic table. Today we will be learning about 3.7, origins of the elements and the evolution of the periodic table. So when we cover, we have four lessons in this section. Today we are going to cover the origin of elements, history of the periodic table, the early versions of periodic table and the current one, and something called periodic law. Then we are going to discuss the structure of the modern periodic table. You are already aware of it. We have groups and uh, periods. And uh, then we are going to discuss the three classes of elements with that you have arranged in the periodic table. They are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. And then we are going to talk about something we already know, SPD and F um, valence electrons or uh, elements with those valence electrons are grouped into blocks in the periodic table and some new things we will learn are representative elements, transition elements inner and inner transition elements. So the main idea of this section is that the periodic table is the most important tool in chemistry and we will be using it a lot and you will learn how to um, understand the lots of information that's embedded within it based on its structure and how to use the structure to predict element properties like atomic radius, ionic radius, ionization energy, electronegativity, electron affinity, metallic and non-metallic nature, and the number of valence electrons, and their energy uh, valence shell, and so on. So everything begins with the Big Bang, which is a giant explosion that occurred in a deep space about 14 billion years ago. And this is a figure from NASA showing the stages of the universe as scientists have begun to theorize. And so the first particles, subatomic particles, were created like one microsecond after the Big Bang. And some of them combine to make hydrogen and helium, but it's most of the hydrogen gas clouds. Um, they combine to make the first stars, and then galaxies and dark matter form, and then there was dark energy, and today, which is about 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, we can observe the universe. And this is where we are going to uh, concentrate on in the next figure. So this is for honor students, the origin of elements. Um, everything starts when hydrogen uh, co clouds condensed into stars. A few minutes after, after the Big Bang, hydrogen was made, if you recall. Um, and then in the stars, nuclear fusion takes place where the most common reaction in a young star is fusing two hydrogen atoms to form helium. And this is the source of energy of all stars and our sun um, powers our solar system with this energy. As stars begin to age, um, they become the red giant, go into the red giant stage. When you are in the red giant state, you have um, fused most of your hydrogen and helium and made smaller elements and now you have com uh, combined everything into um, iron after which has an atomic number of 26 or 26 protons so once you get to this stage iron is too heavy for a star to fuse together to make the next bigger element so they collapse internally, leading to planetary nebulas and supernovas. This is an explosion, basically an implosion, and this is where some of the other heavier elements are made. It is also noteworthy that beryllium and, beryllium and boron are formed by the collision of cosmic particles, which are protons, neutrons, electrons, hydrogen, and helium that are freely floating in space. Out of the 118 known elements, 24 of them 
at the very bottom of the periodic table, the heaviest ones are man-made and they do not occur in nature. So here is a periodic table uh, showing from, uh, from NASA showing uh, which elements were made how. This is just for your information. So second topic, history of the periodic table and periodic law. Um, most of the elements like gold, silver and copper were, and iron were known for thousands of years, most of human history. But the last 200 years is when we discovered most of our elements. So since we had a growing list of elements, it, there was a need for scientists like in the last 200 years to arrange them in an order so that you can study their chemical properties and teach them to students. So in 1869, uh, the Russian um, chemist Dmitry Mendeleev organized the known elements into groups based on increasing atomic mass. Now, before him, there were others who made periodic tables, but theirs weren't as good as Mendeleev's because Mendeleev was able to leave spaces for elements he hadn't discovered, like over here because he noticed when he arranged them based on their uh, increasing atomic mass, he found repeating properties of elements that repeated in a way he could predict what their mass, chemical properties, and other things were. This is called periodic law. Repeating properties of elements on the periodic table, we call them periodic law. Please remember that. Years later, the two missing elements shown here were discovered, they were gallium and germanium, and they had the same chemical and physical properties that Mendeleev predicted years ago. This resulted in global fame for Mendeleev and acceptance of his periodic table as the one go-to periodic table. So remember the word periodic law means elements when they are arranged either in order of atomic mass like in Mendeleev's periodic table or atomic number like our periodic table in the modern times. Properties, chemical and physical properties of elements repeat in columns and groups. We call this periodic law. So let's talk about issues with Mendeleev's periodic table that resulted in us making our new periodic table. First, atomic structure was unknown at that time. They didn't know what atoms looked like. So they didn't know about atomic number. They knew about atomic mass. They had no idea about valence electrons or electrons for that matter. And also they had no idea about isotopes. You know that isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons but different masses due to having different numbers of neutrons. So in Mendeleev's periodic table, if there were two isotopes, they would be placed in two um, tiles in the periodic table. This is a great mistake. They're not two elements. So this is why in the modern periodic table, elements are arranged in increasing atomic number. So number three, structure of the modern periodic table. You must remember these. Elements are listed in order of increasing atomic number, moving left to right within the um, rows and columns. There are seven rows and 18 columns. The rows are called period numbers and these are equal to the elements valence shell, which is the last or highest energy level filled by electrons, right? And then the 13 columns are called families or groups. So any element in a column, they have the elements in a column share the same number of valence electrons and chem similar chemical and physical properties. Number four, properties of elements in a period change as you go from left to right. But properties within a group repeat as you move from one to another period. This is called periodicity. So the repeating properties are found within a group 
or a column within a periodic table. And finally, there are three broad categories of elements. I will show you that in the next slide. So 80% of the elements are made up of metals. This includes all of the D block and all of the F block, except for hydrogen and helium, the rest of S block, and some of P block. Uh, metalloids, they zigzag Li um, as lines between metals and nonmetals, and they have metal and nonmetal properties. Last lesson 3.6, we discussed silicon, which is a nonmetal that um, produces electricity when you shine white light on, is one of the metalloids. Nonmetals are on the right side of the periodic table, and almost all of them are in the P block. So let's look where they are. I will be giving you this figure and you need to post it, paste it on your notes. So here are the um, period numbers. Um, so period one and then this is S block, group one and group two on the periodic table. We call them 1A and 2A. And then here is D block right here. D starts in energy level 3, this row is 4, 5, 6, D. And then here's P block which starts in energy level 2, this is 2P, 3P, 4P, 5P, 6P, 7P as you know from earlier. And then finally F block, F electrons, uh, F orbitals start showing in energy level 4 and then 5. And they go right here, these guys start at 50, uh, sorry, these are D, uh, sorry, D, yes, D block elements. This is uh, 4D1 and this is 5D1 and here is uh, 4F, 4F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. Remember there are 14 possible electrons you can put in a F subshell and groups are going this way and periods are going down. So here are the properties of the three main classes of elements. You know this already. Metals have luster, they shine. They are malleable and ductile. We came up with these two properties in properties of um, substances notes. Malleable means you can hammer it into shape and ductile means you can pull them into wires. They conduct electricity and heat. That means electricity and heat can go through them to another substance. They lose electrons when they form ions. So that means they make cations and they are positive. Um, they have low electronegativity and ionization energies. We will discuss what that is in another lesson. And nonmetals are dull, they are brittle, and some are gases at room temperature. They do not conduct heat or electricity very well. They are, have the opposite properties of metals. They prefer to gain electrons than to form uh, when they form ions. So they make anions. They have high electronegativity and ionization energies. Now metalloids, these are the metals shown in blue and the metalloids are shown in green. Note that they are a stair step. You need to color your periodic table to show these. And then the non-metals are shown in this brown color. They have properties of both metals and non-metals. They have a luster, some, some of them and some are brittle. They are semiconductors like sol um, silicon. They can either gain or lose electrons to form ions. They make cations or anions depending on the element. They have moderate electronegativities and ionization energies. And here is a figure showing the blocks of the periodic table based on the last subshell filled with electrons. We discussed this in quarter one and here's S block. So this one for example will be um, valence electron is 2 energy level 2 S1, one electron in the S subshell. So this guy would be energy level 3 valence shell has 
three, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four D uh, electrons. And this guy, for example, this is the sixth column of P block in 3P. So his uh, valence electron is going to go to energy level 3 P subshell with six electrons. For example, this one, this one will have energy level 4. Uh, F subshell will have six electrons because it's in the sixth row. And then this one will be energy level 5 because of this and column 13, so 13 F electrons. That's how you read them. And um, another new thing to remember is S and P orbitals are called representative elements because the um, block number, sorry, the uh, group number exactly corresponds to the number of valence electrons in that block. So group 1 will have 1 valence electrons, group 2 will have 2 valence electrons. And here, this would be, uh, there. this would have 3 electrons, 1, 2, 3. This one will have four, uh, 4 electrons, 5, 6, 7, and 8 electrons. Transition elements are called, the D, D group is called transition elements. And F block, because they fit inside D, are called inner transition elements. So, review of the main points. Um, there are, we discussed the origin of the elements. We talked about the history of the periodic table, how Mendeleev arranged his periodic table based on atomic mass and found the periodic properties of repeating chemical and physical properties so that he could predict missing elements. And today uh, we uh, talk about a periodic table where atoms are arranged based on atomic number or number of protons because we want to account for isotopes of elements being in the same um, periodic table tile, not in two different ones. And there are three main classes of elements, metal, nonmetals, and metalloids. We talked about the periodic table being arranged as S, P, D, and F blocks. We learned where that S and P block elements are called representative elements because their group number corresponds exactly with the number of valence electrons. And then D block is called transition elements. And then F block, because it fits inside D block, is called inner transition elements. Please do the exit ticket. I'll see you in the next video.